Recording in progress. Good day, everyone. Today, we were going to discuss the cooking measurements and conversion. Lesson objectives. At the end of the session, the students should be able to, number one, show understanding on the basic measurements in cooking. Number two, show mastery on how to measure ingredients used in cooking. Number three, show understanding of basic conversions used in cooking. Number four, show mastery on converting ingredients used in recipes. Number five, familiarize common abbreviations, equivalents, substitutions, cooking terms, oven temperatures, and test for done, done, done nest in the reading and following a recipe. Okay, so let's start. So why it is why it is important that you learn how to measure the ingredients properly. So bakit nga ba importante na alam ninyo kung paano gamitin ang tools and equipment and bakit importante na alam ninyo kung paano magsukat ng tama? Because sabi nga dito, learning how to measure ingredients is essential when you are learning how to cook. So napaka-importante kasi it will give you the correct balance of ingredients what the correct balance of ingredients is what makes food taste good. Diba? Kasi kahit tama yung mga ingredients na nandyan, pero kung sobra-sobra yung mga sukat, so expect natin na mag-iiba yung lasa. Like for example, too much salt is mag- uh, ano siya, na magiging salty po yung food ninyo. Diba? So kapag kulang naman yung salt, so magiging matabang naman. Excuse me. So, magiging matabang naman. So, it's very important that you know the correct balance of ingredients to make your food taste good. Okay? Cooking measurements and cooking conversion are a point of confusion for many people. Whether you are a newbie cook or even quite seasoned, sometimes measurement just do not seem to make sense. We have tablespoon, cups, and meron din tayo mga pang measurement ng liquid okay but you only understand us standard measurement okay let's start to this one okay professional cooks make it look so easy by just throwing in a dash of this or pinch pag sinabi natin pinch parang isang kurot lang ng ingredients okay when we say pinch of um pepper so parang isang kurot lang yun ng pepper but they have the experience and the pelt for measuring without always having to use the exact measuring tools when you, when you are learning how to cook it is best to try to be precise with all your measurement so yung iba kasi parket marunong na silang magluto Means, madalas, hindi na sila gumagamit ng uh, measuring tools. So, totoo yan, lalo na sa mga ibang industry. But, it's important talaga para standard ang lasa na lagi tayong gagamit ng mga measuring spoon and measuring cup. So, the three basic tools used to measure ingredients in cooking. So, what are those three measuring tools that we use? First one is the measuring spoon. So, ito yun. Maliit. Papalaki. A measuring spoon is a spoon used to measure amount of ingredients either liquid or dry. So, pwede tong pang liquid, pwede rin siyang pang dry. Sometimes, it can be made of plastic, metals, and other materials. And it also have different sizes. May teaspoon, may tablespoon. What are the basic size of measuring spoons come with five spoon? So, ano-ano yun? 1/8 teaspoon, 1/4 teaspoon, 1/2 teaspoon, 1 table uh 1 teaspoon. Then this one is ito. Ito 1/2 tablespoon to eh. 1 tablespoon. Okay? So madalas 5 lang yung set, wala tong 1/2 tablespoon. So kaya dapat matututo rin kayo kung Paano pag walang 1 tablespoon? So, anong pwede ninyong gamitin sa mga to? Ilang 1 half teaspoon ang kailangan para mabuo ang 1 tablespoon? So, dapat alam nyo rin yung mga ganun. Okay? Para hindi kayo aasa sa ganito. Kasi, what, 
there is some scenario na minsan walang one tablespoon, ba? Diba? Kulang yung mga ano spoon. So, dapat alam nyo rin kung ilan ang teaspoon na kailangan para mabuo ang isang tablespoon. Okay, the next, take note ha, this measuring spoon can be used in liquid or dry ingredients. The next one is dry measuring cups. Kapag ka dry ang ingredients, this kind of measuring cups ang ating dapat gamitin. Kapag ka liquid ingredients, iba po ang measuring cups na ginagamit natin. Kasi this one is created for measuring dry ingredients. Kaya siya tinawag na dry measuring cups. A dry measuring cups is used for measuring solid cooking ingredients like what? Like flour, sugar, oats, and etc. Sometimes it's made uh, from plastic or metal and usually set po siya. It includes various measurements. May one cup, may one half cup, one fourth cup. So, depende po. Parang kagaya lang din po siya no? sa measuring spoon po natin. May mga ibang iba't ibang sizes din. Actually makikita niyo naman 'yan. Ayun oh, nakalagay sa ganito. Kaya minsan dito sa gilid nakalagay. Oh, paano siya ginagamit? When using a dry measuring cup, the capacity is measured to the level top of the cup. So ang pinaka maximum capacity niya sa pinaka ibabaw ng cup. At dapat yung measuring cup ninyo is nakalagay siya sa table na maayos kapag magme-measure kayo para at least pantay, hindi yung table na tabingi kasi hindi magiging pantay yung pagsukat ninyo. So, importante rin yun. At hindi nyo dapat inaangat yung measuring cup para titignan. Ilalapag po siya sa table na pantay, tsaka nyo po titignan kung okay na. Kapag brown sugar, pwede nyo po siyang ipak. Kapag ka naman white sugar, as is lang po. Hindi po siya idinidiin. I will provide uh, some additional educational video para at least mas makatch up ninyo yung sinasabi ko, okay? Then, kapag may excess dito sa ibabaw, you can use steel spatula to scrape yung excess para at least pantay yung ibabaw, pantay ang sukat. Okay? Then next, we have liquid measuring cups. Ito yung sinasabi ko. This one is especially formulated for liquid measuring. So like for example, oil, milk, water. So ito dapat ang ginagamit natin. Uulitin ko. This one is for dry measuring cups, okay? And this one is for liquid measuring. Kaya dapat pag mga liquid yung minimeasure ninyo, ganito talaga dapat yung ginagamit ninyo. Usually it's made from glass. Okay? So, same lang din. Dapat ilalagay nyo siya sa table na maayos, na pantay, at saka nyo siya lalagyan para at least mamimeasure ninyo. May label naman yan. Ayan, naka, ito, kung mapapansin ninyo, para may mga guhit, yan yung mga sukat. Para at least talagang pantay siya. Always look at eye level, but do not hold the cup to your eye level. Hindi nga, yung kagaya nga na sinasabi ko, yung inaangat ninyo, tas sisilipin nyo siya, kapantay sa mata nyo, hindi. Kailangan nakapatong siya sa table, then tsaka nyo titignan kung sukat na ba. ba diba? Para guaranteed yung sukat na makukuha ninyo. Ayan, sabi nga dito, put the cup on a flat surface, bend down, and look at the outside of the cup to get an accurate measurement. Okay, the next... This one is the common cooking abbreviation. Recipe are full of culinary codes like abbreviation and weird measurements. So as you can see sa kanin sa last topic natin sa mga recipe meron tayong mga abbreviation na nakikita sa in, sa recipe. Hindi naman diyan ilalagay na buong word na cup. So madalas or tablespoon hindi naman kasi masyado ng ano sisikip ang recipe. So, madalas abbreviation po yung ginagamit natin sa ating mga equipment and ingredients. Okay? Mamaya makikita natin. 
ko ano yung mga abbreviation na dapat natin gamitin. Okay. Abbreviation used in recipe, eto na. So, pag tablespoon, anong abbreviation ang ginagamit? Sometimes, malaking T, or pwedeng TBS lang, pwedeng TB, or TBSP. So, ang ibig sabihin niya ay tablespoon. So, sa susunod, once na may nakita po kayo na abbreviation sa recipe na nakalagay, to example, eto. Nakalagay ganyan. Ganyan ang recipe. So, that means to say, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay 2 tablespoon of sugar. Eh, ma'am, paano kung ang nakita ako naman ganito? Eh, ang alam kong abbreviation po ng tablespoon ay TBSP. So, dito, pinag-aaralan nga natin what are those other abbreviation that can be used in recipe. So, pagka TBS, 2, ibig sabihin ulit yan, tablespoon pa rin yun of sugar. Kasi, abbreviation ng tablespoon ay TBS. Pwedeng TB, pwedeng TBSP. Okay? Clear? The next one is teaspoon. So, ang abbreviation niya ay TSP or small t. Okay? Then, kapag cup naman, Capital C or small c. Spec, SPK, Bushels, BU, Pec, PK. Tatandaan nyo yan ha? Dozen is DOZ, DOZ. Few grains, FG. So may tuldok, F tuldok, G tuldok. Okay? Few grains ang ibig sabihin. Grams, GM. Kilograms, KG. Liter, pwedeng capital L or small l. Milliliters, pwedeng ganito, ML, yan. Okay? Pound, LB, or ganito. Or then hashtag. Quart, QT. Minute, mean. Siyempre, ang hour ay HR. Degree centigrade, capital C, pero kung mapapansin ninyo, meron siyang bilog sa ibabaw. Okay? That's degree centigrade. Then degree Fahrenheit, capital F, then merong maliit ulit na bilog sa ibabaw. Degrees in Kelvin, K, may maliit ulit sa ibabaw. Okay? So si degree centigrade, capital C. So huwag kayo malilito. Kasi si CAP, capital C lang. Wala siyang bilog sa ibabaw. Si degree centigrade, may bilog sa ibabaw. Yun ang pinagkaibahan po nila ng abbreviation ng CAP. Tsaka pag binasa nyo naman po yun, makikita nyo agad kung ito ba ay temperature or ito ba ay ingredients. Okay? Ons, Jose. Pint, PT, and moderate mode. MOD. Food way, oh, so that's the different abbreviation that we use in recipe, okay? So, tandaan po yung mga yan. Then, food weight and measurement. Dash is spec a few grains. Pag sinabing dash, specs, or a few grains, ibig sabihin, it's less than 1-8 teaspoon. Tandaan na, pag nakabasa ninyo, dash, specs, or a few grains ang nakalagay. Halimbawa, Put a dash of pepper. So, ibig sabihin, maglagay ka ng less than 1-8 teaspoon ng pepper doon sa niluluto mo. Kasi yun ang ibig sabihin ng dash specs a few grains. Less than 1-8 teaspoon. Next. 3 teaspoon is equivalent to 1 tablespoon. Ito, given na yung mga ibang conversion dito. Pero you can compute din naman din eh kapag uh, hindi specific yung naka... I mean, kapag wala dito yung pinaka-equivalent, so pwede naman ninyong compute din. At least alam ninyo yung pinaka-basic. Para pag mas malaki yung ingredients, kukumpute nyo na lang. 3, 3 teaspoons, equivalent to 1 tablespoon. 16 tablespoon, equivalent to 1 cup. So, ibig sabihin, 
kung wala kayong one cup para mabuo nyo yung example, may ingredients kayo na kailangan, then wala kayong one cup. So, pwede nyo itong gamitin, 16 tablespoon. Kasi ang 16 tablespoon ay katumbas naman ng one cup. 8 tablespoon is one half cup. 4 tablespoon is equivalent to one fourth cup. 5 and one third tablespoon equivalent to one third cup. Ayan, so on and so forth. 8 ounce, one cup, li one cup, but liquid po yan, hindi dry ingredients. Okay? One jigger is equivalent to one and a half ounce. 2 tablespoon is equivalent to 1 ounce. Kasi depende sa conversion eh. Kung liquid ba or dry yung i-convert ninyo. Okay, so... 1 half pound butter is equivalent to 1 cup or 2 stick. 1 fourth pound equivalent to 1 half cup or 1 stick. So, yan yung mga ibang example ng ating uh, equivalent, no? From teaspoon to tablespoon, to tablespoon, from tablespoon to cup. So, yan. Then, cooking temperature. The three common temperature scales are Celsius. Siyempre, yun naman madalas ginagamit natin, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Madalang naman yung Kelvin, pero madalas Celsius and Fahrenheit. So, meron tayong tatlo. Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Each scale has its uses, so it's likely you'll encounter them and need to convert between them. Fortunately, the conversion formula are simple. So, ito yung pinaka-formula natin. Celsius to Fahrenheit. 9 over 5, tapos kung ano yung given na Celsius plus 32 is yun yung Fahrenheit. Progress. Okay, dito sa conversion natin, magpo-provide na lang ako ng separate video for this para at least mas makuha ninyo. But example, yung Kelvin to Celsius, pero ito yung mga formula. Okay? So like for example, ang 1 Celsius is equivalent to 33.8 Fahrenheit. Paano nakuha? So ganito. Sample. tayo. 1 Celsius. Ang given, i-convert mo siya into Fahrenheit. Convert to Fahrenheit, okay? So, ang gagawin ninyo is Ganito, 1 Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32 is equivalent to 33.8 Fahrenheit. Dapat may calculator kayo para masusundan ninyo. Kapag ka naman Kelvin to Celsius, example, ang given Kelvin natin ay ang given Kelvin ay 300 Kelvin, i-convert mo to Celsius. So, ang gagawin mo, 300, which is ito yung Kelvin, 300 Kelvin, Minus 273 to get the Celsius. Okay? O, oh, hanap tayong calculator. Ayan. 300 Kelvin minus 273 is equivalent to 27 Celsius. Ulet ha. Sorry. 300 Kelvin ang given. Igo convert mo siya into Celsius. 
So, yung Kelvin, minus 273 lang para to get the Celsius. Okay? So, ulit. 300, yun yung given na Kelvin, minus 273. So, ang Celsius nga ay 27 Celsius ang equivalent. Okay? Yun. Okay. Balik naman tayo dito. Ayan, may calculator na. Para makita ninyo. Balik tayo dito sa Celsius to Fahrenheit. So, like for example, ang given Fahrenheit natin is 1 Fahrenheit, ah, 1 Celsius. 1 Celsius. Dito yan ha. Ah. Ito ang ikukumpit natin na ah. Celsius to Fahrenheit. Ang given is 1 Celsius. So, anong equivalent nito sa Fahrenheit? Paano nakuha yung 33.8 Fahrenheit? So, ganito ang ginawa natin na solution. Ito ang formula, gagamitin natin. So, 1 is galing dito. Ayun, yung formula, okay? Pwede rin naman din ganito muna, 9 over 5 times 1, kasi yun yung given Celsius, plus 32. So, dun mo makukuha yung 33.8. So, 1 Celsius is equivalent to 33.8 Fahrenheit. Pwede rin naman din ganito. 1, Itong 1, nakuha yan dito, 1 Celsius. Kasi given yan eh. Celsius yan, i-convert mo to Fahrenheit. So, given ng Celsius. 1 times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. So, 33.8 pa rin yung lalabas. Okay? So, 1 Celsius equivalent to 33.8 Fahrenheit. Okay, thank you. So, ganun po yung pag-compute niyan. Nandiyan naman ang formula, so susundan nyo lang po siya. If you have any question, didiscuss po natin sa group chat natin. Next, useful temperature facts. So, bakit importante na gumamit tayo ng tamang temperature? Kasi para at least maging tama din yung pagluto, hindi hilaw, hindi sunog. So, lagi nyo titignan kung ano ba yung naka-indicate sa recipe, kung ito ba ay Celsius or Fahrenheit. Baka kasi mamaya, um, Fahrenheit pala yung nakalagay, then Celsius din yung sinet, so hindi magiging okay yung lulutuin ninyo, okay? So, Celsius and Fahrenheit are, are the same at negative 40 degrees. Water boils naman is 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. Water freeze, madalas, ang pinaka-standard ay 0 degrees Celsius and 32 Fahrenheit. Absolute zero is zero K. Celsius and Fahrenheit are degree scales. The degree symbol is not used to report temperature using the Kelvin scales. Tandaan na, ito, symbols na ito ay Celsius. Ito naman ay Fahrenheit. Often te temperature is Fahrenheit. Very slow. Nagre-range lang siya ng 250 degrees to 300 degrees. Slow, 300 to 325 degrees. Moderate, 350 to 375 Hot, 400 degrees to 425 degrees. In Fahrenheit po ito ha. Very hot, 450 degrees to 475 Fahrenheit. Okay? So, that's all for today. If you have any questions or clarification, we will discuss, this. We will discuss your question and clarification to our group chat. Thank you.